I'm Jess from Finland, 21 years old. Pretty strange for everyone, I guess. <laughs> So easily get into this habit of following somebody's orders. I think it kind of crosses my personality, and I, I, I'm not really me in that kind of environment. Trying to get these, somebody has to death base. Oh no, you yeah. wanna reload into the base? Memes? Fuck off. Bye bye. So we can just put that. Okay. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> I thought that was just a cute play or something. <laughs> He would dictate the tempo of the game. He's like a dog that's chasing a ball, but you can't really see the ball. So you're just trying to run after the dog who's running after the ball. Derek, safe is anything but VG Gaming. I've no remorse. Oh, no tail. Oh, 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 when I queue into like in pubs into him, I think he's one of the only players that I, Dota players would understand. Like I, I literally dodge. Like he's the only guy that I, out F4. You know, when I realize that I'm against him, I just like. I just close the game and I just queue another one. Pass the tier threes, TP coming in from RTW, Jarex, he's looking for the zone, he's got it! Oh, Jarex, the patience paid off! A beautiful slam comes into play! Thompson is down, but ES is up, where the echo slam. Oh, there it is! Dancing forward, there's your slam, there's the dunk, there's the play! Jarex, the savior of OG! The next project is always the most difficult. Eventually, I just have to keep going this path, and uh, it will come clearer in my mind that uh, what I really wanted. No echo slam, no global, guys. They did. Make the shakers up. No, no echo. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Man up. And so my legend begins. Before he was a two-time TI winner, one of the most inventive position fours Dota's ever seen, and a lovable mastermind with some of the best hair in esports, Yessa Jarex Vinica was just your average, easygoing gamer growing up in metropolitan Finland. I come from Helsinki. I was born there. I do my occasional escapes to the nature and the wilderness. In spite of his carefree demeanor, Jarex was the kind of guy who enjoyed adversity, who enjoyed challenging himself, and ultimately, seeing what he was made of. That's why he loved video games, because they allowed him to test his mettle without fear of consequence. I thought that the game is a very good platform so that we can do the mistakes and learn from them. But then, you know, like a lot of Dota greats, Jarex got his start in Heroes of New Earth, the frenetic, fast-paced Defense of the Ancients spinoff. And like a lot of esports hopefuls, his journey towards professional gaming was thwarted by a stint of mandatory military service. So at that time, when I was in high school, I also thought that uh, I have to go through military service. What you have is this strict routine that is to be followed. It is something you have to kind of keep up with. There's no there's no such thing as what you want. For most, spending a little time in the Navy would have simply been a learning experience, a way to toughen up. But for a free spirit like Jerax, it was torture. Uh, I don't so easily get into this habit of following somebody's orders. I think it kind of closes my personality and uh, I, I'm not really me in that kind of environment. He didn't care much for his studies either. Despite showing a proficiency in math, school hadn't gripped Jarax the way he thought it would. He cared more about the games he was mastering in his spare time. I didn't really know what I'm gonna do with my life. I went to these schools and uh, I would study like physics and math, but nothing felt uh, as big. In fact, it was his obsession with one game in particular that changed everything. I, I described Dota as something along the lines of uh, playing chess, but also having a team base. Hellbent on entering Dota's competitive scene, Jarex moved to Stockholm in early 2013 in order to join an up-and-coming roster known as the QPAD Red Pandas. I'm Jess from Finland, 21 years old. Pretty strange for everyone, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody really knows me. 
But following a slew of awful results, the core members left the team, including Jerax. Deflated, Jerax returned to Finland and spent the next year trying to make a name for himself on teams such as Four Anchors Plus Sea Captain and Team Tinker, all to no avail. I believe this is the beginning of the end. Double buyback comes through. The racks will still go down as Koipa is running the interference on the front line. Triple buyback now, but Boy will go down. Yeah, I and mean, so they just Jirax. die to like two or three right clicks yep. from anyone. GG. GG. And GG gets called and four ASC are eliminated. Well, it's important to understand that up until about 2014, Jerex was a fairly uninspiring roamer. He was good, but nothing to write home about. And then Dota 2 saw the addition of what was easily the weirdest, most skill intensive support it had ever seen. Earth Spirit. Earth Spirit is a strength hero whose variety of skill shot abilities allow him to be one of the most robust and unpredictable heroes in the game. Earth Spirit was unintuitive and, for the average player, a nightmare to play. You needed a billion IQ to do well, and he required twice, if not three times as many inputs to do things that other heroes could do in a single key press. And you get Earth Spirit. This is like Apparently he has six stones, they all revolve kind of around the three spells that you have. One like does this, if you redo this, you do that. If one slows, kind of one pulls down, everything's like kind of like messy. It's, it's totally, it's crazy messy and stuff. The trade-off was that in the right hands, this hero could do anything. Naturally, for a zany, free-flowing thinker like Jerax, it was love at first sight. I personally think I'm a little bit more individual player than actually a team player. But it's kind of funny for me to say. I have this uh, calm side of me, and then uh, I have this energetic, like, full action, yes sir. In a bid to make it to TI at all costs, Jarek started talking to MVP Hot Six's Heen in 2015 and made the drastic decision to relocate to the single most esports centric country in the world. I joined the team because I knew Heen, who is now my coach. I had uh, this problem where I didn't really feel like belonging in a team and uh, I was looking for a team, so Korea kind of took me. I, it was like three days I had to basically go to Korea and then I had like maybe five days to, till I travel, so I needed to quit my university and uh, stuff like this. It was very intense back then because I, I didn't really know what I'm gonna do and uh, what's gonna happen. By 2016, Jerang's stock had risen and it became clear that his stint in the East had worked in one respect. He returned to Europe as one of the hottest supports in the region. He then joined his first tier one roster, the karaoke led five Jungs, who were quickly signed by Liquid. Oh, stun onto two, but the Storm Hammer's there, they'll jump straight in, they'll look for mind control, but look at this three man, Jerax, with the magnetizer as well, and now they're coming in with the ultimate, with the exorcism, two dead at the moment on the side of Vega. They're going to lose Pasha as well. Huge combo there from the boys on Liquid. Within no time, Jerax shot to the top, putting up top tier result after top tier result but Liquid just couldn't close. The racks are falling even if they kill No Tail once, they gotta do it again and he's not dead yet. Miracle going off, up to a mega kill. The bear about to drop will pop the BKB, but they beat down Mana. They go Scepter to point defensively. The bear will fall, the hero's next. OG are doing it, Liquid, they can't withstand the punishment. OG are the Manila major champions. Second time the first ever team to repeat. By the time that year's international rolled around, Liquid were being hailed as potential favorites. Desperate to shake his second place curse, Jarax entered his first TI full of hopes, expectations, and, well, nerves. 3 4 3 4 back with the racks and falling moves. She's gonna get the objectives by that from Ohio. Mid one, look at the line, and the bar is dropped from Ohio! They've done it! Liquid are going home in the lower bracket of Fnatic with one of the best performances I feel we've ever seen from them. Following his disappointing turnout at TI6, Jerax felt that he needed a change. In a somewhat surprising move, he left Liquid in favor of a European roster who'd also imploded at TI. The difference was that this one had a track record for doing what Jerax couldn't, winning majors. And here you here have it, go. folks. OG, your Manila major champions. 
Built on optimism, greatness, and a whole lot of friendship, OG wouldn't just be Jerax's next home, it would be his last. Getting Jerax made sense. I'm about to make the biggest mistake of my life. He was the best four position during that time. Having Jerax drawn was super hype. He's incredibly good at the game. Jerax took to OG like a fish to water. Outside of the game, he was as loyal and loving as the brothers who'd adopted him. Inside, he was quirky, unconventional, and talented. He had a unique way of roaming. It was like he saw things that others just didn't. Jerax, he would dictate the tempo of the game. He's like a dog that's chasing a ball, but you can't really see the ball. So you're just trying to run after the dog who's running after the ball. Alongside Fly, No Tail, and their invaluable coach Seb, Jerax steamrolled his way to back-to-back -back major wins. OG, your Boston major champions, ladies and gentlemen. They had issues at DAC. They have overcome them to push through this single elimination dangerous bracket and beat out a team that has looked superb throughout this entire tournament, Virtus Pro. Unbelievable. Oh. <laughs> this game. <laughs> oh, the love. The hope was that, with the help of Jerax's calm, creative playmaking, OG would finally hoist the Aegis. The year prior, they dominated everything outside of the international, only to crumble on the game's biggest stage. OG eliminated on day number two a TI6, something that I would never imagine myself hearing. I cannot believe it. With TI7 on the horizon, people figured that there was no way these four-time major winners could bomb out of TI again, but they did. Levin's fishing, he's got the refresher, BKB didn't get off the lasso very early, but now he wrangles in no-tail, he's got another lasso available. RP in control, but there's the RP. Espo with the trade, quap on over the top, skewer into the side, but maybe on the back lines, wrecks them all, three dead, look for more. Bloodstone charges piling in, no-tail's next, they keep on going, no buybacks on three, the end is nigh. GG. LGD, slay the beast, they move on. It's a bitter pill to swallow for OG, for their fans, four-time major champions, but it's just something about TI that OG just can't seem to get it together. There was problems of like being too emotional in the games. We were kind of like uh, shattered, I would say. You can only take so much, right? Like every time you go for TI and every time you lose, every punch feels different. From there on out, it felt as if OG were coming apart at the seams. This time, they didn't bounce back, and they failed to put up results outside of TI2. For all intents and purposes, OG were dismissed as a sinking ship. Over time, because they won so much and were so dominant, it's only natural that watching OG flounder a little bit definitely was enjoyable for some people. And yet, through it all, it felt as if Jerax was the one thing about OG that couldn't degrade or deteriorate. It wasn't just his jubilant personality, it was his remarkable level of play. His innate ability to understand Dota's deepest intricacies both in and out of the game. So you can't just pick up. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> I thought that was just a cute play or something. <laughs> He straight up executed it. <laughs> oh, dude. OG had become a part of Jerax, and he a part of them. Even as it looked like the ship was starting to sink, he remained loyal to the brothers who'd adopted him as their own. Unfortunately, not everybody was a stalwart. When you lose a lot, you also lose trust. Things get hectic. You can have a conversation, and then suddenly it's an argument, and suddenly the argument uh, makes distrust. And then, on a dark and rainy day during ESL 1 Birmingham, following an especially rough loss to Fnatic, it happened. And, uh, well, we just got called into a room. And I learned that the two players are leaving, and one of them's my best friend. S4 leaving? Sure, I can understand that. But Fly leaving OG? He's not just the captain. He owns part of the team. His girlfriend is the manager of the team. It would tear the team apart if he would leave. Three months out of TI, it felt as if the heart of OG had been ripped in half. 
To be honest, it felt as if Jerax, the only truly top tier player remaining on that roster, should take his wares elsewhere. Not much was said. I think max three sentences were spoken in that room. Then they left. We spent eight years together and now it's over. That was how that happened. But he didn't. Jerax stayed to do the hardest thing of all, start over. There's a lot of things you need to prepare for yourself for making it to TI and then uh, just uh, making that sure that all happens, the preparation goes well. That's what I want to do and then make it whatever happens. And the rest, as they say, is history. We've got six days with the best Dota 2 teams in the world. $25 million in total. The top team taking away 11 million of that. The largest eSport prize pool in history. Maybe a team fight win if they can jump forward and find the Abyssal onto the Winter's Curse, but it's not gonna happen. They have the roll forward onto two. It's not bad, but off on the side, Thompson with the BKB out, punching people down. They find two kills. That's GG. OG on in the upper bracket. No tell. Static with this victory, moving into the top six for OG. Unbelievable performance from a team that feels like they just formed. Showing up here on the main stage and taking down BCJ Storm, that's looked like one of the best teams in the tournament. Looking at OG and how they played today, do you think that momentum is going to carry on? It is definitely possible, but the next round is going to be very, very tough for them. OG versus EG. I love me some spicy stuff, and OG versus EG yeah. is probably the spiciest match of the entire It's nothing TI. to do with the players, and how I'm sure they'll be perfect gentlemen, and they'll be sportsmen like. And they're coming in, Jerex as well. Coming he, forward. He's got a rapier, but it's almost certainly they're going for the base. OG looking to close things up. They're onto the agent. They're beating it down at a pace that EG can't compare to. GG oh. is good. OG wins the series two to one. What a I remember hitting my keyboard so hard that the keys fell off. Bracket, OG will move one step closer to the ages. From open qualifiers to the grand finals of the biggest stage in Dota, OG orchestrated what is arguably the greatest Cinderella story in the history of esports. And at the center of all their confidence, all of their rallies, all of their unthinkable comebacks, was their rock, Jerax. Thompson is down, but he is up where the echo. Slam! Oh, there he is! forward! There's your slam! There's the dump! There's the play! Jirax, the savior of OG! Probably the craziest game of the whole tournament that we've had so far. OG! They have reached their first TI Grand Final! He was the source of some much-needed pressure relief. I'm trying to get these. Somebody has to death base. Oh, no, you yeah. want to reload into the base? No, no, no. Memes? Bye bye. But what a lot of people didn't realize is that when it mattered most, his team could count on Jerax to close the deal. Echo, echo. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I also go. Reposition. He also echo. He also echo here. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It does, really doesn't matter. We have buybacks. Okay. End the game. Go to the agent. Oh, oh my god. Team. Your TIA Following their unimaginable triumph at TI-8, OG began to play with never-before-seen levels of confidence and nonchalance. Of course, Jerax had pretty much always played that way. Past the tier threes, TP coming in from RTW, Jerax, he's looking for the zone, he's got it! Oh, Jerax, the patience paid off! A beautiful slam comes into play! But without any notable wins after they claimed the Aegis, by the time TI-9 rolled around, OG were pretty much seen as a write-off. Tremendous as their run at last year's International had been, it was largely thought of as a fluke. A beautiful, awesome, divinely ordained fluke, but a fluke nonetheless. So why is it that winning two TIs has been so difficult thus far? Well, it hasn't been that difficult for us so far. We're not there yet. But... <laughs> <laughs> for them to also win TI9, well, I mean, come on, that would just be impossible, right? Oh my god, I can't believe this. I can't believe what we're seeing in this game for. OG. Nah, it's just, 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 it
it's okay, guys. We had a good run. GG. GG. Get in there! GG is gold! OG are your two time TI champions! Man, I come, bro. Man, I'm there. What are you doing, man? It's back to back. Yeah, Against every expectation, OG emerged from the International 2019 as the first group of players ever to amass two TI titles. What's more, they'd amassed them consecutively, making their accomplishment doubly unprecedented. They weren't just great, they were THE greats, the undisputed GOATs, and everyone knew it. The fucking best team in the story, the best team in the story. <laughs> And you are friends. That's the most important thing. You are friends. Imagine. People had argued for years that Jerax was the best position four player in the world, but now it was pretty much indisputable. And now an arrow nails Seb. Paparazzi says it's time to come back. The reinforcements are here. The call has been made. Beachy Gaming gonna just kite out and he'll slowly take away. They're all gonna make it to the mines. Mines. They're just making it to the mines. They're saying, please, no. Jerex, save this anything but Beachy Gaming have oh, no remorse. The mines. No tail. No tail. No tail. No tail. No tail. No tail. No that's why it was especially heartbreaking when, in January of 2020, just when the jokes about OG winning TI yet again were starting to come into season, Jerax announced his retirement from professional Dota. There was, quite literally, nothing in all of Dota left for him to accomplish. He'd done everything he'd set out to do, and he'd done it on his terms. This, this fact that uh, I achieved it and then I was kind of left into emptiness was something that caused a lot of feelings. I I think overall it was not the easiest year, uh, for myself at least. I think uh, coming from winning TI, I think it can heavily affect you, how you look at uh, tournaments. And uh, people start looking things differently. For Jerax, winning two TIs was a turning point. As far as he was concerned, the time had come to stop, look around and say, now what? I have to keep asking myself, what do I really want with life? And what is really that important to go forward for and work for. And uh, it's kind of finding this spark that I kind of lights up whatever I've given to Dota. Needless to say, it was sad to see Jerax go, but it became clear that it would be wrong for the community who adored him so dearly to hold it against him. The thing that made Jerax so endearing in the first place was his freewheeling nature, his desire to go against the grain. I think the next project is always the most difficult Eventually, I just have to keep going this path and uh, it will come clearer in my mind that uh, what I really want to do. Jerax is, in every sense of the word, a nomad, both in-game and out, never to be tied down, the kind of person who doesn't stick around long after he's mastered something, and master Dota, he did. It isn't clear what his future holds, but one thing is for sure. As with everything Jerax has done, the beauty of it lies in the unpredictability, the deep, inextinguishable idiosyncrasy that makes Jerax, well, Jerax. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.